Hello, everyone. This is Tom Connolly, president of Verson Capital Management. And thank you for joining us today on our short video, uh, Discounting Dividends. Uh, the reason we decided to do this video is to put in perspective how to think about the valuation of an investment. And we're going to focus on stocks, um, uh, especially in light of possible recessionary conditions. So we're going to take a little bit different spin on it than you might see out in the media. Uh, how to think about value and investment and how much a recession might impact that. In order to illustrate the idea, we're going to use um, stock, uh, stock investments as a, as a focus and dividends that they pay. And so let's, uh, let's begin. Um, in, in classical finance, the theory on how you would value an investment is that it's pretty much the sum of financial benefits you'll receive in the future. So for stocks, that would be dividends. For bonds, it would be interest. For real estate, it would be rents. Uh, but it's a little more complex than just calculating or, or um, estimating these numbers way out into the future and adding them up back to the present. Uh, because of an idea, we all know that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. In other words, the value of a dollar of dividends today is worth more than the same amount next year and, and even more than the amount I received two years from now. One of the interesting things in finance is, it'll, is it allows you to think about moving money over time. Uh, and the linking concept there is uh, the time value of money. And so one way to illustrate this is if I, uh, if you're lending to someone other than family most likely, a uh, hundred dollars in, in two years, you would normally expect more than two hundred dollars back because you're uh, the, the other person has the use and benefit of that money for two years. And uh, they would typically pay interest and that interest is is you could look at it as rent on on the use of the money. Uh, this is an interesting idea. So the the, the further out um, you go, you lend the money for five years while well, I get interest each of those five years. Plus, if I invest the interest, the interest earns money. So it's a compounding effect. Um, we work that idea kind of backwards to uh, value an investment. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute. Another way to think about this is um, in non-financial terms is if I lend the money out and uh, I can earn interest or I could have consume the money. I could have taken a trip and gotten been, uh, enjoyed uh, my trip um, and gotten the benefits out of that, which is another uh, form of benefit uh, other than money. Or I could uh, take the trip in five years and collect interest uh, by lending the money. But anyway, the idea of um, loaning and, and receiving rent on the money in terms of interest for loans, dividends for stocks, rents for real estate, um, allows us to move uh, sums throughout time. So let's let's isolate down on our particular issue here, and that is valuing a, a, a stock investment. And we're gonna we're gonna look at the, considering the entire stock market because with an indiv individual company, depending on what kind of company it is, the estimation of dividends is really difficult. We don't know if our company's going to survive. Earnings might be volatile. But if we look at the whole stock market, things are a bit more stable over time. Companies come and go. They have good years, bad years, but a lot of that will wash out. So we're going to I'm gonna, we're going to think in terms of just the broad stock market here uh, moving forward. So going forward, I'd like you to think about this stock value being the entire S&P 500. And we want to think about where the value comes from. Well, we just talked about the idea that um, it's really an agglomeration of dividends that we receive out in the future. So here we extract in this picture the value of next year's dividend. But the uh, value of the dividend two years out is going to be a little less. So we see there's another box here that we took out of the hole that represents the dividend two years out, but because it's two years out, it's a little smaller than next year's. And then here's the third year 
uh, on ad nauseum. I mean, you've got all these different years, seven years out the dividends from now. And so the, but you can see there's still a considerable amount of stock value left that represents dividends further out than even seven years. So let's zero in on this idea just a little bit more and graphically. Um, there's another thing going on uh, that dividends tend to grow over time. So, uh, you know, we have a we have investment in a in the stock market. We're taking dividends out, but uh, dividends come out of corporate earnings, and uh, the stock market or companies in the stock market tend to reinvest a good portion of those earnings into the company, uh, with the idea that they'll grow profits and then. They, the since they pay dividends out of profits, dividends grow. So we see this effect over time that dividends tend to grow over time and become bigger. And so the effect I just talked about where dividends get smaller because they're further out in time is kind of uh, a tension with the fact that they also grow. So they uh, those two effects offset each other to some degree. Um, so when you look at it, uh, um, in terms of combining these, we, we still have dividends in the future um, slightly declining a bit, but the fact that they grow greatly offsets this. So let's take a look at what that means um, in terms of the stock value uh, today. All the sum of these discounted dividends goes into the stock value today, uh, the combination of discounting and earnings growth. And now I can take a look at kind of how this looks over a long period of time and what it means for entering, uh, thinking about how a recession might affect my investment in the next few years. So this is a little bit of a busy slide. So let me uh, let me just talk about this. We, we have some assumptions built into this that are based on history you know, a, 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 a discount rate of almost 7% and dividend growth of about 4.8%. We just took uh, from long, uh, long historical numbers. Uh, so we're, in other words, we're growing dividends at 4.8% a year, and we're using a discount rate or the amount of rent uh, for money in the future of uh, over 6.8%. Uh, uh, now, um, when we do that, we can add up all the dividends, uh, let's say out to 40 years here, and um, each line represents kind of a, a percentage of the value of the investment represented by those dividends. So if I look at the next five years dividends down at the bottom here, uh, I can see that as a, as a percentage of my investment, the next five year dividends, even though they're in close and they're not discounted as much, are only worth 11% of the value of my investment. If I go out to 10 years, 21% of the value of my investment is from dividends over the next 10 years. And if I go out um, to 30 years, a little over half of my investment is from dividends discounted back that I receive um, uh, 30 years uh, or shorter, uh, which is really amazing. That means about 50% of my investments is from growing cash flows or dividends that are 30 years or more out. Uh, so that's a pretty amazing thing to think about. Um, but when you have the dividends compounding with growth over time, that's a pretty powerful effect. So how, why, how does this link to a recession? Well, typically recession, your garden variety recession, and I'm not talking about systemic meltdowns like like we had in the depression or uh, 2007, 2009, which were really not just economic downturns, they were um, uh, manifestations of systemic problems in terms of debt and liquidity. Um, but a garden variety recession lasts months or a year or two, um, and typically the economy uh, rebounds pretty quickly. So it's only gonna affect the dividends in the in, in the, you know next one two or three years, if that, and typically um, economies uh, and markets recover quickly after these recessions, and uh, dividends get back uh, to trend uh, pre recession trend uh, fairly quickly you know, historically. So the question is is if 
they're only affecting the recession only affects these cash flows in the first few years. You know, maybe it reduces them. Maybe companies cut their dividends for a while. Um, uh, in, in the future, they always raise them back again. Um, why would we want to go through the Sturm and Drang in the media, the, all the excitement, there's going to be a recession, there's not going to be a recession, when it only influences a small part of the valuation of our investment in terms of these future cash flows. So I just want to leave you with that thought that maybe it's not all worth losing sleep over. Um, in terms of getting excited by what you're reading or seeing in the media. Uh, people who own stocks or real estate are long-term investors and in, interested in these long, you know, receiving uh, the financial benefits over a very long period of time, or you, sh it, you should be a long-term investor. You shouldn't be in short, uh, based on short-term uh, because it's very difficult to predict when a recession begins, when a recession ends. And, and then it's not just that, it's what, when does the market respond to that. You got to get more than one thing right to time these things. So um, knowing this, uh, a couple conclusions, not not to get too worried about whether we're in a recession or not. Markets typically go down before a recession starts even, and it starts to, they typically start to recover, you know, right around the depths of the recession. Very difficult to time. And uh, they influence a very small portion of the future cash flows, which represent uh, part of the value of your investment, a very small part. So I'll leave you with that thought and hopefully you'll sleep better tonight. Thank you so much.